have a good day. Ho, ho, ho. Happy holidays. LA Beast here. And today, what I plan on doing uh, is just, you know what, this is more of an end of the year 2023 holiday question and answer uh, to where, you know what, I'm going to sit back, roll up my sleeves, even though my sleeves aren't rolled up and I'm sweating profusely wearing this Santa jacket, and I'm going to answer some important questions from you, the LA Beast fans. Uh, and while I'm answering these questions in true holiday style, I'm going to be sipping on some vintage drinks such as this Pepsi Holiday Spice, which expired back in January of 2005. My, my wife bought this for me a couple years ago. Uh, and an LABs fan sent me this 1999 Coca-Cola Classic. Uh, so I think as we start off this awesome, even though it may not be awesome, this question and answer holiday session, I'm, go I'm going to have some Holiday Spice. Oh boy. We're going to try and open this. I wasn't expecting it to be so difficult. Uh, this this relic is now being ruined by me trying to get, consume it. It still smells like sugar. Uh, probably doesn't have any carbonation. It looks red. Uh, so there's probably... Okay, cool. We'll just keep some at the bottom there. Uh, I was going to say it has like a caramel color. That looks straight up red as if there's red dye. Which may or may not be, be healthy or safe. But you know what? Ho, 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 cheers. Mm. Zero carbonation, no hint of spice. First question from Natasha S. With a little one on the way, have you thought of the future plans for your career? Even if that doesn't include YouTube. Um, and you know what, the, the amazing thing is, this year in 2023, my wife and I found out that we are expecting a child, AKA a son. Just like in the movie, The Lion King at the end, in the hospital room, I plan on holding my son up. Uh, which will be pretty cool. That That's a real world possibility. And the cool thing is I've actually, I finished my second dad book today. Uh, this, these are great bathroom reading books. Now, so I'm definitely excited. I'm really excited to become a father, to quite possibly pass along things not to do. Specifically, pretty much everything I've done on YouTube, I'm going to teach my son not to do. And to answer Natasha's question, with, with a child on the way, obviously a child is full-time work uh, on top of YouTube, which isn't easy to try and think of a new idea uh, and post consistently, but you know what? Um, sure, I, I've explored other options besides YouTube. I think uh, back in 2008 to 2010, I used to work for Pepsi. Uh, and I would like ride along with the driver delivering soda. Um, so like a job that involves getting outside, like being a postman or driving an Amazon delivery truck. Uh, if I had to do something to get a real job, that's like where my focus would be, like being a delivery driver somehow. Now, yeah, honestly, like even though if, if YouTube does not remain my full-time job, knock on wood, I will always continue to create content here on YouTube to the best of my ability. Uh, so you know what? Uh, sure, it's nerve-wracking uh, to become a father to be. Uh, obviously, you have to provide for your child. And you know what? As long as YouTube is, is here, as long as I, I'm doing the best that I can to continue to create content, uh, I've been doing my cameo, book cameo messages, I'm going to keep on keeping on, and I'm going to keep on trucking. Uh, so cheers to that. Thank you for your question, Natasha. I'm probably, I'm probably gonna have to go back and edit that down uh, to a shorter answer. Cheers. Ah, my thirst has been quenched. Question number two is from Peter H. Now, Peter H would say like, he'd love to see me uh, get back uh, and eat some crazier things like I've done in years past. Uh, but Peter's main question was, where did I get the Irish flag that I have uh, in the background of all my videos for the, the past couple years? Specifically talking about this Irish flag. It actually has a cool, quick backstory here. Um, it's a, there's a place called McMurphy's. It's a hometown bar that me and my friends have frequented for the past 20 years or so. Uh, and 20 years ago, me and my friend Chris, uh, we, I think we had way too many shots of Jack Daniels, too many beers. Now, and as we were leaving McMurphy's, the flag was hanging out there, and I was like, you know what? That's a great flag. And I, I like lifted the pole, uh, and I just I start we like 
Yeah, exactly. Like Chris and I were like walking around town and I was waving the Irish flag. Uh, we ended the night off. I actually had the Irish flag as a cape uh, and the Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts, for those of you that don't know, at the end of the day, they throw away any donuts not sold and they put them in a dumpster and, and me and my buddy Chris uh, with that Irish flag were eating donuts out of a dumpster. But at the time, they tasted, they tasted delicious. Uh, and the cool thing is, like years later, uh, the, everybody at McMurphy's, I appreciate you all, you are awesome. For Guinness World Records, they allowed me, like I was doing a gauntlet of Guinness World Records titles. Uh, so like I would attempt one record and the adjudicator, like, you got it. And I'd move to the next record, he's like, you got it. Boom, and I went right down the line and at McMurphy's where I allegedly borrowed that flag, I achieved five Guinness World Records titles. Now, and I feel now I gave them one of the, the Guinness World Records title plaques, hopefully, uh, as as an equal swap or trade. And on that flag, actually, like family, friends over the years that have passed away, uh, I'll write their name on the flag. So like, as I'm doing a challenge, uh, if things aren't going my way, like, I know, I know everybody whose name I wrote on that flag has my back and it helps me push through. Question number three, Anthony F. asks, What is the worst challenge you have ever done? Now, and you know what, honestly, throughout the years I've been asked this question, and I feel like it's a generic question, as the past 13 years or so I've done so many things uh, here on YouTube to where I would consider it the worst challenge I've ever done. Uh, but off the top of my head, like some of the top things I regret doing, eating a five pound bag of sugar-free gummy bears. Like everybody on Amazon is writing reviews about how uh, just a small handful would cause somebody to explode from their butthole uh, because sugar-free candies are made with laxatives. Uh, so pretty much after consuming five pounds of laxatives willingly, I, I probably went to the bathroom about 18 to 27 times um, in a 24-hour period, and as a 30-year-old man, I had to sleep on the bathroom floor. Uh, the second uh, craziest thing I probably have done is fly to northern Brazil uh, and like stay with the Satewe Mawe tribe in the Amazon rainforest and participate in their ancient ritual from when um, young boys in the tribe officially become men. Uh, and by doing so, they stick their hands in these little mittens now, filled with poisonous ants, also known as bullet ants, which are like, <laughs> a bullet ant is like that big. Um, and like, when, once you stick your hands in the gloves, uh, the ants start stinging your hands. Uh, and to me, it felt like a, a surgeon with a burning hot scalpel was operating on my hands when I had no pain medication. But I'd probably say that the worst challenge that I've done was walking barefoot the farthest distance on Lego bricks. Um, and on that specific day, in my garage, it was 1,275 paces back and forth on a 10-foot course filled with Lego bricks. Uh, and it was like, I, had to, I think I was walking three and a half straight hours, but like the last hour and a half, as the Lego pieces were shattering, it felt like I was walking on broken, jagged pieces of glass. And as you can see by my feet right there, I barely achieved the record by walking 2.414 miles in my garage, barefoot on Lego bricks, the most excruciating pain I've ever felt in my life. Uh, towards the end, I think in my brain, my brain was saying, give up, quit. You can't do this, the pain is too bad. The worst pain I've ever been in, in my life uh, was that, uh, walking barefoot the farthest distance on Lego bricks. Question number four comes from Stone Cold Eddie Billy, who says and asks, what do your doctors say when you have to go there after a bad judgment call on an outcome? Now, and you know what? Well, one of my earlier catchphrases here on YouTube has been, I need to go to the hospital. Uh, and on a few occasions, I've actually really had to go to the hospital. Um, I believe the first time ever was back in May of 2012. As my, fair enough, I was a 28-year-old man. I was living at home with my parents. They went away on a weekend vacation. And I, I decided to put butter on my mother's kitchen floor, give myself a brain freeze by drinking a big gulp from 7-Eleven, and then randomly trying to deliver birthday presents across that buttered kitchen floor barefoot to where I slipped and fell, my foot got lodged underneath the refrigerator, and I nearly sliced my toe off, to which we cannot show that footage. Now, as that video has been age-restricted years ago. Now, but when I was actually in the hospital, as you can see right here, the doctor was sewing my toe back on, 
She asked me what happened, I explained exactly what I did, and I'll never forget it, even though I was yipped up on pain medication, she looked at me and said, what you just did was dumb. And I was like, you know what? I can't disagree with you. I would definitely say the second time, I actually voluntarily uh, checked myself into the emergency room, and honestly, if uh, there were people waiting, uh, I, I would have like walked out and, and let those people have the hospital bed. Now, but when I voluntarily swallowed 21 dimes, now my goal for that video, all I wanted to do uh, was have the most expensive bowel movement. Now, actually, I tried to call a gold dealer, uh, and I tried to buy like a $500 gold coin to swallow. He's like, why do you need this gold coin? And I told him uh, what I was trying to do, and he hung up the phone. Uh, and you know what, thank goodness I did my research to swallow dimes uh, because if I actually had uh, swallowed pennies, whatever's on the penny would actually burn a hole through my stomach lining. Uh, but the doctors, uh, when I explained, uh, I just wanted to get the x-ray to see the dimes in my stomach, uh, the doctor was actually pretty cool. Probably one of the more crazier doctor experiences that I've had over the years. Um, I was actually moving out of my apartment where I lived with my EMT roommate uh, and I had purchased all this stuff from the Asian market. Uh, and instead of just throwing it away and letting it go to waste, uh, I took all this stuff from the freezer, put it on the kitchen table to let it thaw out a little bit, and then brought it into my room and I, I did like a taste test uh, of eating uh, uncooked, raw, Asian market meat. Uh, and then like, I think it was about a week later, I flew to Chicago uh, to where Takiro Kobayashi, the hot dog champion, Pat Deep Dish Bertoletti, Tim Gravy Brown and Notorious B.O.B. Bob Shout and myself. We consumed a 40 pound undercooked goat to help reverse the curse of the, the Chicago Cubs Billy Goat curse. Uh, and they actually went on to win the World Series the next year, which is pretty cool. But, but honestly, yes, after consuming that much raw, and with the goat, my job was to eat the eyes, the brains, the tongue, the organs. And just like two weeks of just eating stuff human beings should not eat, I couldn't stop going to the bathroom. Uh, and like I thought that I had parasites in my stomach uh, and yeah, I'll just show like a short snippet uh, of, of the conversation I have with the doctor I just want to protect his privacy They're like this is what he said to me when I was like he's like you did what roll the footage cheers good afternoon good afternoon good to see you again yeah right, so you ate raw meat uh, I did I, it was just like Asian market food items, like a heart, like cow brains and pig uterus and stuff like that. A cow's a cow's brain. A cow's brain. Uh huh. And but I. What else? Pig uh, uterus. Pig uterus. Uh huh. Lamb testicles. Uh huh. Uh, pork, pigs, pigs blood. All in one sitting. Yeah, I was trying to show the fortitude that I had to <laughs> eat, eat hearts and stuff like that. That was, that was about two and a half weeks ago now. Uh -huh. And then I flew to Chicago and I wasn't preparing to do this, but uh, Takiro Kobayashi, the hot dog champion yeah. of the world, like we ate a 40 pound goat to help mm -hmm. break the Chicago Cubs curse. But I think the goat may have been undercooked as well. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's just been, I've had diarrhea every single second of the day. So the problem with, with parasites is that there are a variety of treatments based on which one you think is going on. So I can give you the one that's like for amoeba. I have a prescription and I have to go home and scoot into a pan. So I hope Stone Cold Eddie Billy, uh, with those three examples, that quite possibly could answer your question here today, my friend. Thank you for asking. Question number five comes from Melissa S. Who asks, do you feel like you need to have nerves of steel to be a YouTuber? How does one work through the negative people's comments and complaints? Um, and you know what, Melissa S., that's a great question. Um, I, I would definitely say uh, throughout the years that I've been doing YouTube, have I, have I been met with online bullying? Have I, have I been met with negative comments? Uh, people trying to pick on me and put down my content? You're darn right. Uh, and you know what, uh, if I had to go back, I started my channel August 7, 2010, and if I had to go back and like try and recreate the journey to where I'm sitting here talking to you right now, could I 
probably do it, no. Uh, because like I've been through blood, sweat, and tears, hell, uh, you name it, like mental hell of trying to deal with people trying to put me down. Uh, the, the, the first memory that I have, I believe it was probably back in 2010, like right when I started my channel, uh, there was a challenge, which it's probably too dangerous to do now, eating a Big Mac in one bite. And I think I was wearing like a Notre Dame t-shirt, and like, I, I was like trying to eat this Big Mac in one bite, and I noticed I started to re receive my first negative comments from this one channel. Um, and instead of me like letting this person, um, exactly, my, like my dad says that everybody has like a staircase in life and everybody's trying to climb their staircase and some people get to the top before others. Now, some people can't get past the first step. Now, and my dad said like the haters are the people, they'll throw out a tug of war rope. And if you pick up that tug of war rope and st start tugging on it, you're gonna play the haters game. Uh, but like as you're climbing your staircase to success, if you put your blinders on and stay focused uh, and like don't even touch that rope, the haters can't play their game. Uh, but, but in the specific instance with this video, and I was like, you know what, dickwad? I'm gonna pick up that rope, and not only I'm gonna play your game, but I'm gonna end your game. Um, and yeah, like the person that was talking smack on my videos had their own YouTube channel, uh, and it was like this person, uh, they were like taking target practice with a BB gun, like shooting cans off a fence. Uh, I think they like shot a BB into a gallon of milk. You know, I'm like, you just shot a BB into a gallon of milk from 10 feet away. I'm um, like, how is that impressive, you wuss? Uh, and I, 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 yes, you know what? Uh, if people can be a dick uh, and dish it to me, I'll take it. Uh, but just know that I can also dish it back. Uh, so that's what I did. I, I just started dishing it back to this one channel. Uh, they had enough balls to keep posting content, and I was right there. Immediately, like seconds after they uploaded. Um, and yeah, eventually this person stopped bullying me because I was like, you know what, I'm not going to sit here and take your shit. Uh, and I, I dish it right back. So you know what, cheers to me for doing that, even though, well, you know what, exactly. Should you, if somebody's bullying you on the internet, should you retaliate with bullying? No. Uh, but throughout the years, again, there, there have been many people that have tried to hold me down, put me down. Uh, you just got to stay above it. Uh, and like the one great thing that I've learned, we're gonna wrap this question up here, Melissa, Melissa S, uh, is that the one way to beat the haters, and, and like the, and, uh, YouTube has like tried to demonetize and uh, censorship and this and that, the one way to win is to continue to create content. That's it. Uh, and and uh, throughout many times, it's been difficult for me to get my mind right to keep on creating. Oh, when I know that the videos would be met with so much hate, but here I am. Uh, the obstacles that pre presented themselves, like there, there's one person in, in particular, now he just achieved my first ever Guinness World Records title. Uh, I think it was like eating the most ghost peppers in two minutes or something like that. And this person said, I'm gonna beat the LA Beast record and put them to shame. Now, but what this person didn't know is that I already had three other videos of me achieving Guinness World Records titles. So like this this person posted their rebuttal, which they failed, and then the next day I was like, BAM! Here's another Guinness World Records uh, title. BAM! Like the next day, here's another one that I achieved. BAM! Here's another one that I achieved. And I buried this person into the dirt of YouTube. Uh, so, yes, I've been met with uh, internet bullies. It's not easy. YouTube isn't easy, uh, and I would definitely say now, here in 2023, uh, it's not like it was back in 2010. So, uh, my advice to those that are trying to start a YouTube channel, like, you, you, you have to be passionate about what you're doing and the content that you're, you're posting, uh, or else you're not going to make it. Because it's not easy. Can you do it? Absolutely. Question number six comes from Jade L, who asks, do I miss eating cactus? Uh, and you know what, quite honestly, the answer to that question would have to be an absolute no. Uh, and some of the examples that I have uh, written down here, uh, I would say probably one of the more memorable experiences of me eating a cactus was in 2016 as part of Wing Bowl. 
uh, a crazy rowdy chicken wing contest in Philadelphia. Uh, 15 to 20,000 people fill this arena, and prior to the contest, I probably ate one of the most gnarly cactus I've ever consumed in my life. The spikes were the size of toothpicks, uh, and I actually guaranteed the radio host, Angelo Cataldi, uh, I was like, I've eaten many cactus before in my life. My mouth has never bled, and my mouth won't bleed. It's Radio WIP on Facebook and Twitter. The 2020 Sports Update on Sports Radio 94 WIP. All right, 846. One of the new wrinkles tomorrow at the Wing Ball will be the appearance for the first time of a, a legendary competitive eater out and novelty eater. L.A. Beast. <laughs> and in a minute, I, I just, I need another minute to think this over because L.A. Beast has a cactus in front of him with big, long needle things sticking out of it. Right. And somehow tomorrow, uh, he's going to eat it. I would like to show the Philadelphia fans what I can do. And uh, in front of me right now is a cactus with giant spikes on it. Look at them out. They're like an inch and a half. <laughs> there. And I, I, I pricked my finger. So you're going to try to chew that, but it's going to cause blood and stuff, no? Uh, no, I'm pretty experienced at eating cactus. <laughs> this will actually be my 11th uh, cact cacti that I've eaten but in if, my life. If the thing goes into your lip, it's going to bleed, no? No, surprisingly, there's no blood. I think just if you can mentally get over the fact that you're biting into a uh, bunch of spikes, uh, then after that, everything just goes down pretty easily. Right. Oh I never, I ate a cactus, I've never seen blood before, but I got spikes all up in my mouth. Ah, look at that shit. You need floss. <laughs> yeah, that's Preach. what the bubble gum for. <laughs> Anybody who eats cactus, bubble gum gets the spikes out of your mouth. I once consumed 10 cactus after tricking my mind into doing so by first consuming four ghost peppers. Uh, so like as like my, my pain receptors were going off and I was like freaking out from like the, the peppers, I then submerged myself in, in freezing cold water. So I, I was like, I don't know what's going on right now. And like, as I looked down at the 10 cacti, I was like, you know what? I was like, you know what? Eating 10 cactus right now wouldn't be that bad. And then I proceeded uh, to eat all 10 cactus. And then actually my good friend, Mike, who lives out in California, uh, was doing stand-up comedy for a while. Uh, and him and his buddies, uh, they did like a lot of improv stand-up stuff. And I actually joined them for a couple of shows. Uh, and you know what? Improv isn't easy. Doing stand-up comedy isn't easy. But my job uh, at the end of the show uh, was to like do an eating demonstration. And I would start off by eating an entire carton of eggs with the shell. Peace! 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 Mm, yum yum! Part of the balanced breakfast right there. That's one. <laughs> That's two. Yeah, let's go. Come on. Peace! 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 Uh, I think I would chug entire bottles of pancake syrup. Okay, here we go. <laughs> chug it, 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 like eating a gnarly cactus. crowds I made probably 80 bucks like 80 bucks a show uh, and like after like a couple shows in my mind I was like there's no end game for this for me by consuming these three things over and over and over again so um, you know what absolutely uh, to, to answer this question in the grand scheme of things no I do not miss eating cactus would I eat a cactus again if it came down to it Never say never. Question number seven comes from Stephen T, who asks, 
what is my biggest food regret? Uh, and just like the question, like, what, what is my worst challenge ever? That's pretty generic. Uh, is that throughout the years, I've consumed many food items that I would consider god-awful. But I would have to say one of the more memorable ones was when I consumed some 1985 G.I. Joe cereal from this specific box. Uh, now, like, as I, I purchased this on eBay and, like, the, the, the actual box was sealed, but when I opened up uh, the box itself, the bag inside was opened. Now, and I think I did this video back in, like, 2017, so uh, for, like, 20-plus years, uh, the cereal was exposed to the elements. Uh, and as I took my first whiff, it just, it, like, it, it's, I don't know, honestly, I don't know what, remember what I said, but he, here it is. I'm interested to see what this tastes like. I guess we'll just open it up. Okay, well, it's already open. Oh boy, are there bugs? There may be bugs. Okay, it was already open. Um, hmm, okay. Oh, oh my God. Whoo! It kind of smells like a, a, a dirty patent leather shoe penny loafer that's been sitting in a stale shoe bin. Oh God, I, I think there's bugs. Uh, oh, that's way too much. G.I. Joe action stars. I think I I got like a rash in my eyeball. We're just gonna do this really fast. Okay. No wonder, no wonder it's hard to find 90 snacks because food is not supposed to, to last this long. 30, 33 year old G.I. Joe, 1985 action stars. Oh God, this one's brown. That's brown. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll take one more bite. I'll take one more bite. <sighs> it smells like dirty underpants that are 33 years old. Uh, that, that a man's grundle has been in. And, and chemicals? Now I understand why they put best if used before. Uh, yeah, Lucky Charms, G.I. Joe, Action Stars has a burning chemical sensation on the back of my throat. Uh, and it smells like if this was filled with dog shit. So yes, uh, in, in conclusion, uh, as I consumed some cereal from my childhood to where it tasted like chemicals and my, my tongue started to burn, that probably ranks right up there as one of the biggest food regrets. As we move on to question number eight, I'm going to pour the remainder of this holiday spice into this glass. Uh, and you know what the crazy thing is? I'm all, like, we're on question number eight. I'm going to go to question number 10. And then I'm actually going to wait uh, until Monday. Today's Saturday and on Monday, we're going to keep on filming. So for continuity purposes, this is going to be sitting on this desk in this spot for the next day and a half. But nonetheless, now, Holiday Spice from 2005 doesn't taste good. Okay, you know what? Question number eight is from Ricky H. Who says, or and asks, What challenge would you absolutely never do again unless Mr. Beast goaded you into doing it with the promise of fronting your future son's college fund entirely in advance, but only if you won? To where, uh, you know what? I'm going to drink as much as I can so it's not sitting here for two days. Uh, really? Like, uh, do I watch Mr. Beast videos? No. But nonetheless, you know what? To answer your question, if I, if there's a challenge that I would never do again unless Mr. Beast said so, uh, I really don't have any use to try and ride a 2,200 pound rodeo bull ever again. As I actually like sat down on this thing, like in that little cage, it was like moving back and forth. You gotta get mean, get aggressive, take the fight to this sucker. You got it, beast. It's all in the hat. That's right. A little more. Right there. I think he's pissing. I think he likes you. Oh, he's, he's scared of you, beast. He knows. The beast of beast L.A. Beast is the beast. L.A. beast is about to get crazy. Oh, my strong hand is my right arm. Uh, but honestly, like, you're actually holding on to the rodeo rope with your weak arm. And you actually have to use your strong arm to balance yourself when you're on the rodeo bull. You 
got this piece. No, I believe it's like the first time as that gate opened, I rode the rodeo bull uh, for like 2.3 seconds. Thanks oh. to me! Woo! Oh, me! Oh, 45! <laughs> oh! Almost! Seven more seconds in the end. As you actually see me stand up and like walk towards the fence, uh, it was like a couple of seconds, like I couldn't feel my legs. And the guy, he was like, hey, you want to ride the rodeo bull again? I was like, bring it on. Oh. You want him again? I got him again. Please <laughs> <laughs> to me. Get forward, Kevin. Get forward. Get forward. Holy Get forward. shit. And honestly, yes. You know, if, if there's like a challenge that I really wouldn't ever want to do again, I don't need to see like if I'm a great rodeo bull rider. But they're like, one and done, we're done with that. So thank you, Ricky H, for that question. Question number nine is from Rob A, who asks, when am I coming to London next? So Rob A and I can, can do some sort of Guinness World Records title challenge together. Now, and you know what, Rob A? Uh, if I'm being honest here with the sun on the way, I'm trying to save as much money as I can for diapers and formula and stuff like that. I don't know. Now, and you know what, the, the cool thing is, like, uh, the last time I was actually in London, the, la the first and last time I was ever in London was back in 1998 for the British Open. I think it was like we went on the Beatles tour and like I, the, the, that's me back in 1998. Uh, here's a photo of me standing in front of Strawberry Fields Forever. I think there's a photo of me with like one of the guys with the funny hats. Uh, and then also, uh, even though this man did not win the 1998 British Open, I have a sweet bowl cut, I dressed up pretty nice. There's a photo of me with Davis Love the third. Uh, I, I believe Mark O'Meara won the British Open in 1998 when I was in London last. Uh, Tiger Woods was there. The cool thing about me being there, that it was like a rainy Saturday. Uh, I'll check the weather on that. And like nobody was on the course. Uh, and like I was following Tiger Woods the entire time. Uh, and as he went from like one hole to the next in between, it was just me and him. And I said to Tiger Woods, I was like, hey, Tiger, you're playing great. And he looked at me and he said, Thanks. Uh, and then like years later, I think it was uh, 2018 or so, uh, I took a selfie with Tiger Woods and he didn't talk to me. He didn't recognize me. Um, so yeah, you know what? Uh, to answer your question on whether or not I'll be in London soon, probably not. Question number 10 is a hypothetical question from M, quite possibly Emily S. Uh, and M asks, if you had your own action figure slash Barbie doll of myself and your figure came with three accessories, what would these accessories be? Um, yeah, and you know what, M? Uh, cheers, that's a great question. And you know what, I should have done research, but I specifically, I'll, I'll put it right here, there was a group of people that said, I want to make you an LAP. <coughs> oh boy, okay, oh. Oh jeez. Okay, you know what, uh, there was a group of people that said, hey, I want to make you an LA Beast action figure uh, to where it's it's pretty cool. I, I actually still have it to this very day. Um, this is definitely from back in 2013 or 2014. Uh, the back of the box has got facts about the LA Beast. Uh, and the, the accessories that this action figure came with is my Captain America shield. I had my backwards rock star hat that I used to wear. I used to wear some yellow sunglasses, but now, the one accessory that came with this that I actually lost as I moved back from Los Angeles to the state of New Jersey 
there was in fact a little tiny Crystal Pepsi bottle. Um, so, uh, you know what, M? If I add some extra accessories to my LA Beast action figure, it's a one of one that actually still exists to this very day. Uh, if somebody could quite possibly make me another Crystal Pepsi bottle, maybe a holiday spice bottle, um, definitely a cactus would be pretty cool as an accessory. High C Ecto Cooler would be even better. Great question, M. Uh, and to, to the people that made this, I'll put the link right here to the video. I appreciate you that somehow, some way. I just, I just spilled that on my shirt. Somehow, some way, I have a sweet LA Beast action figure because of you. To answer MS's question. End of part one.